Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Whale Nerds Podcast. This is episode eight. I'm here with Eric and Caitlin. Hey, everyone. Hello. My name is Slater, and uh, <clears throat> we are talking whales. Yes, we are. But first, we're talking friendships. What? We're yeah, I guess be... we're going to talk about a little bit about us and then we be how we got into the Definitely field <laughs> <laughs> and all kinds of other fun stuff. <clears throat> where did I meet you guys at? I know where I met Caitlin. I met her on the back of the Sir Clipper. Margo was there. Sir Clipper. Yep. Yep. Where did I meet you? Uh, Harbor Breeze. No, oh, yeah. you guys back when I worked for the aquarium. Yeah, but I feel like I knew who Eric was online for a long time before I knew who. And I, I think knew. I knew both of you were online. Yeah. yeah. On Facebook. Yeah, and I knew who I knew who Slater Moore Photography was for a while. <clears throat> yeah, same. <laughs> well, kind of. Everybody kept telling me like, "Oh, you should you should meet this guy Slater Moore," and uh, and then he came up to Monterey when I was on contract with the BBC, so I never actually saw him when he came to Monterey. And they were like, "Oh, Slater's there," and I was like, "Who's Slater?" <laughs> Who's this whale nerd? And then I was trapped on a boat with him for eight hours, and we we were all right. Oh, my God. It was not eight. It was 12. It was like, yeah. We <laughs> were pushing 13. Yeah, it was. <laughs> but we saw lots of cool stuff. I, I got some of my best photos that day. Oh. Isn't that crazy how, like, there's, like, a select few days that you know, like, you got your best mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, those are the days you that remember. one for of the nice sunset days, huh? rest of your life. I think Last because I think I talked about this in another podcast, but because I'm photographing, you definitely remember it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm sure you guys photograph too when you're out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But it takes a lot for me to take out the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, back then I was shooting all the time because I was asked to as yeah. part of the deck crew responsibilities. And but yeah, that was one of the nicest days. Flat, glassy, calm. We stayed out till sunset. We had killer whales like breaching and tail logging in the sunset. It was Gorgeous. My I was so sunburned. My wife, was, <laughs> she had like given up at like hour seven, and she, she was, was laying, laying down on her cabin. iPad. Oh my gosh! She's like, "Are we going home soon?" And I'm like, "I, I thought we should have been back an hour ago." <laughs> and then, meanwhile, I'm like in the back corner shaking my head, like, "No, we are not going home soon." <laughs> I mean, I'm glad obviously that we didn't. My last shot of the night was my killer whale breaching in the sunset. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Never know if you say like ten minutes later something crazy could happen. Yeah. Was that yeah. that? Oh, it's not in here. No, it's, it's not. not here. Posted it but in you here. saw it. I think I seen it. Yeah. Oh, it's the one you were doing for the giveaway. Yeah. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> Science. <laughs> I think um, I didn't really officially. Well, I met Eric Bioluminescent Kayaking. Yeah, years ago. <laughs> it was the first really? time I yeah. actually interacted with him in person, and then. When we were looking to open Discovery, I was looking for someone that had like both sides of the business experience as far as managing and then also on the boats and education and stuff. And so I was like, oh, Eric. And then our good friend Kate Cummings just like gave me the nudge I needed to <clears throat> call him and offer him a job and then ask for joint custody of Eric once he got here. <laughs> okay. I can't wait for them to get back from <clears throat> Antarctica. Yeah. Are they back? They're not back. They're no, not no, back yet. No, no, they won't be back for like Another five or six days at least, right? Yeah, it's going to be Not a while. The end of the month. And then we're all going, right? And then, what? <laughs> Next year, 2020. I wish. We're I going wish. to Antarctica. Um, no, but you and I are going on you trips. You can't say that. We have so many things for 2020. It's like, 2020, I'm going to Norway. 2020, it's like, how many trips we can we do in one year? <laughs> I thought we were going to Norway. And then I'm going to Tonga, Norway. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. I thought we were going to Alaska when we last talked. Yeah. Mm. We have too many trips on our bucket There's list. There's so many places I need to go to see whales. <clears throat> There's so many ah. places I need to go. Yeah, not that I just want to go. I just need to. You need to. They're necessities. <laughs> They're necessities. The bear necessities or the whale necessities. <clears throat> oh, so back to this thing. Yeah, I've back always, to the I've always thing. wondered this myself too. Slater, I, obviously I've known you for a while as a friend, but how the heck did you learn how to take such great photos? <laughs> <laughs> Teach you you some wrote stuff. that on the topics? I didn't write it like that. That's just coming out of my head. That was from the heart, really. Well... When you work on a boat as a deckhand and, you know, in a place that there's not very many whales, <laughs> you have nothing but time on your hands to look stuff up on Google and YouTube. <laughs> and I shot every day. I shot every day for five years now. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously, I shot more back when I was in Newport because the weather was better, so I went every day. Yep. So, Just <clears throat> helping out on the boat, like fish photos no i was originally well I, you know i was a deckhand on the fish fishing boat for uh-huh. like seven years and then i moved over to the whale watching boat was a deckhand there right when i got my captain license i moved over there to be a deckhand so that i could eventually run the boat which didn't happen because i was given a camera 
and I was given a camera by the company so that I could take pictures of people for souvenirs. <laughs> but instead of taking pictures of, well, nah, I took pictures of people, but I lined them up in the corner from the upper deck down uh-huh. to the lower deck so that I could get them with the dolphins in the wake, the common dolphins. Mm. So I started doing that, and then I started taking pictures of the dolphins to throw it in the mix so they can get like a photo of them and the animal. And then I just started cutting the people out and just, <laughs> and just taking pictures. So that's how it all started. Just like, oh, hey, there's dolphins back there. Someone they got it. A they fo- they a bought camera. us a, a Nikon something something and a printer. And that printer jammed so many times. <laughs> and I used to put five photos in a. Um, I had a separate sleeve for each photo, and I'd hold all five of them and walk around to every person on the boat and say, "It's four for, or no? What was it? It was four for." Um, Twenty dollar or no four or five for each single photo or all of them for twenty. That's what it was. Oh, so, so you five sold them on the boat? Yeah, single, and I printed them. Oh no way! I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it started with a printer. Uh huh. And I'll tell you how it changed to the digital. Was sperm whales? The the sperm whales? The printer jammed, and I was like, Ah, how am I gonna sell this? <laughs> was photos? that the nursery pod day? Yeah, yeah, the fifty. Oh, so you were still on a fishing boat when that happened? No, no, or? I was on the whale. Watch oh, party. you're right. Yeah, whale I heard it. Okay. Over. So, um. Yeah, the printer jammed, and like I had promised these people photos at the end of the trip. So then I was like, you know, just give me your email. And every single person on the entire boat gave me their email. I had like 60 emails. <laughs> like, and you know, there's 100 plus, there's 100 people on the boat. So that's a good, that's a good amount of emails, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, I remember trying to, and, I, and then I didn't pay for the program. So I had to send like five out at a time and keep doing it until I could uh-huh. send everyone their photos. Yep, that's how I got into it. Very cool. What about you, KT? <clears throat> um, well, marine biology I didn't decide to do till I was in college. I was doing biology. I was actually working with mycobacteriophage, which are viruses that eat mycobacteria. Boring. Yeah, that was what my in, <laughs> that was my. Hold on, I gotta go <laughs> out for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was my end conclusion. Was like, you know, the lab was pretty well funded, but it was so boring, and the bacteria smelled. And I was like, ah, I can't do this. And I ended up taking Jim Sumich's uh, class for a weekend. I was like, how hard can this be? Pass, no pass. Whales and dolphins for the weekend in Newport. Cool. And I loved it. Newport, Oregon, not Newport yeah, Beach, California. Newport, Oregon. <laughs> uh, this was at Oregon State. Not as cool, sorry. <clears throat> it's cooler. <laughs> um, literally. <laughs> it's colder. <laughs> and... Uh, and then I fell in love with it, and then um, just kind of stuck with it. We have we actually at Oregon State have opportunities for undergraduates, which actually are getting better and better all the time. Just you know, in case you want to go there someday for your degree. Um, yeah, I might go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I took a two terms back to back out at the coastal campus at Hatfield Marine Science Center, and during the summer term, I actually worked at my first whale watch gig. At Marine Discovery Tours on the Bayfront in Newport. It was called Marine Discovery? Mar- yes, it was. Do Marine you, Discovery wor- <laughs> Tours. <laughs> All the whale watch companies that I've worked for have to have Discovery in it or something. Okay. <clears throat> so I was working for Fran and Dawn. And hey, I've worked for two places with Discovery. Technically, Larry Hartman had uh, Discovery. I don't know what it was called. It was just Discovery something. Really? That was his private boat, yeah. <laughs> oh. So there you go. Two places with Discovery. So yeah, so MDT, I worked mostly in the office. They originally, when they hired me, said they'd probably be able to put me on the boat, and then that didn't really happen. And then summer, summertime ended, and I was supposed to go back to school anyway, which was kind of perfect, because in the wintertime in, on the Oregon coast, they basically shut down. So there's not the boat's not running, they're doing maintenance, they're maybe doing bay tours, but the rest of their income comes from the retail store and the hotel they had upstairs above the landing. So I was like, whatever, that's fine. It's like not really aligned with what I want to do, and i got to go back to the main campus. So then I was going to graduate, <clears throat> and I was like, well, what do I do? Do I go north to the San Juan Islands? Do I go south? What do, you know, do I go back to Newport? And there was an internship posted at a whale watch company in Monterey, and I was like, well, let's try it. And so I packed up my life in my truck and my savings account and rented a bedroom in someone's house in Marina, California. Did you know someone that lived here already? Nope. I knew no one. Oh, wow. And I just went for it, and it worked out Like within two months of having a free volunteer internship i was getting paid like 15 to 20 hours a week and that was enough to keep paying bills and staying there so then i worked my way into a full-time job and so it was a paid internship wrote. no it was volunteer but i oh, kept saying like hey i, I can't like, live here I have shop I experience yeah. like I, i'm willing to learn whatever on the boats and so they put me in the shop for a little while then i started to learn more and more about the boat stuff and then i was like mainly the deckhand that did all those extended trips for a long time i learned a lot about you know 
how to operate the vessel, maintenance, all that kind of stuff. Because I wanted that experience too, you know? I, like, I wanted to learn mm-hmm. how to troubleshoot and how to run the boat and all that kind of stuff also, uh-huh. which, was, which was good. It worked out. Really interesting. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know you were hired on as an intern first. That's pretty cool. I thought I knew yeah. that, but I thought I knew you started getting paid right away. Yeah, pretty... it was pretty quick after I got down there that I was at least getting part time pay in the shop. Yeah, because so it's hard to live stay. here and not get paid. Yeah, I was like almost out of money and then. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Welcome to the whale world. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how, <laughs> crazy how it all works out. Just kidding. Usually you get really rich when you watch whales. <laughs> Working as a deckhand, the, the tips were good, but no, I'm not a deckhand. Oh, it just can be seasonal, you know. Sometimes it gets mm-hmm. tough in the winter time. You just basically, yeah. if you work in the oil industry, sometimes you got to save your acorns for the winter. Yeah, you yeah. got to make hay while the sun shines, and you got to stash it away for the. This winter. winter is a perfect example. I say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it hasn't rained at all. Not at all. <laughs> not not even once, and it hasn't been windy either. Yeah. Okay, Eric. What about you? Me. I'm old, so this is going to be a long story. That's okay. We got time. We got snacks. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I grew up in the, the South Bay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You have to, if you're from Central or Northern California, I'm talking about South Bay as in uh, Santa Monica Bay. Uh, so I didn't know that. I over didn't there, know where South Bay was. Yeah. When I moved up here, I say, oh, I, I grew up in the like South E40 Bay. Or People think like San Jose or something. <laughs> you guys yeah. talk about E40 and too short. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm from that part of California. Um, yeah, I grew up in the Torrance Redondo Beach area and uh, was always by the water. And, you know, my dad was a fisherman and diver, so loved the ocean. It was in my backyard. And I was obsessed with fish as a kid uh, to the point where I got in trouble because my parents would buy me fish and I'd stick my hand there and pet them and play with them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, that's a goldfish. You know, actually, yeah. Yeah, we were tide pool masters at Haystack Rock, too, yeah. when I was a kid. I went so, to the tide pools once in Dana Point. Yeah. I, I still remember when my first few fish were from Sears. Sears used to sell fish. And, what? Yeah. Sears, like... Did they sell goldfish the or what was it? Yeah. They, sold, they had a pet section. And I remember buying fish what? there. What? Angelfish. <laughs> and then, I thought they sold, like, furniture and, like, dryers. Yeah. And, and clothes. Walk- yeah. They, you could actually get livestock there years ago. You can get chickens wow. and everything there. <laughs> everything. You could even buy. A He's pre- not that much older than us. Awesome. You, you can also. They used to sell prefab houses too. So you sold everything. Oh, yeah. you could have just. You could have just been a one stop shop. They literally yeah. were the one stop. So um, I got my fish there. I remember putting my hand in the t- in the tank and trying to pet them and stuff like that. And then growing up, I started getting into fishing and obviously by the water, you know, surfing. So obsessed with this stuff. And then um, when I turned sixteen, I got my first job and I worked at a. A uh, pet shop where they actually taught me to uh, build acrylic aquariums and next thing you know maintain them. I learned a lot through there. Worked there uh, from the middle of high school and the beginning beginning of college. <laughs> and then uh, during that time, I also volunteered at the um, what is now known as the Ocean Institute. Uh, it used to be known as the Orange County uh, Marine Institute over there in uh, Dana Point for a few years. And then I moved on to uh, the Aquarium of the Pacific, where I actually uh, volunteered there for a year. And then next thing you know, I was uh, put on paid staff for about uh, six years or so. And that's where I really caught the bug for um, whales, marine mammals. And I worked as a naturalist on uh, the boats over there uh, that Harbor Breeze did with um, the aquarium. They used us... uh, uh, folks in the education department at the aquarium uh, as their um, naturalist and I loved it you know I was like just literally just obsessed with whales after my first few uh, whale watch trips so did that for years I uh, started learning more and more about them and you know started going to conferences and everything and next thing you know I was like I want to make this my life and then I was lucky enough to get the uh, opportunity by uh, Dana Wharf uh, my good buddy Carla uh, you know, hey, you know what? They need someone at Dana Wharf. So I talked to Adana over there, and next thing you know, I uh, was there full time. Uh, they taught me how to manage the place for a bit, and still got to spend some time on the boat. And uh, yeah, I really got uh, full on into the field there, and then uh, uh, learned a lot there. So thank you, Donna, <clears throat> and thank you, Carla, <laughs> for uh, linking me up with that. And uh, next thing you know, they stole me and brought me here to Monterey. So um, and the killer whale stole you. Stole yeah. you. I stole, stole you. him. Yeah. So. so that's what brought you to Monterey too. That would be my other question for you, Slater. What? Why Monterey? What yeah. You... The whales. The whales. Because it's like shooting fish in a barrel. 
<laughs> That's actually so okay. How about this? What was the first time you heard about how crazy good it was in Monterey? Like, was there an instant? I have an instant where I was like, oh man, I gotta get down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what? I think I saw um, like Shane's photos yeah. or something. Shane Keena. I think I'm pretty sure I saw like a breaching humpback or something yeah. when I was in Newport. And I remember like Larry was like, oh yeah, there's a place in Monterey. And I'm like, it's only five hours from here. Like it's we can go there, and the first time I drove up, <laughs> we can go there. We can go there. <laughs> the first time I checked, at first time I drove up, didn't check the weather, got here, all trips canceled for two days, and then I was like, yeah, cool. My first day. <laughs> and then I'm looking outside, and I'm arguing with the guy at the the office. I'm like, dude, it's it's not even bad out there. It's so it's flat calm, <laughs> and it's like he's like, yeah, but and then you we went over by the aquarium and looked out, and like you know you can see out past the Next. point now, and it's like breaking out there in the ocean. Yeah, so. Uh, I remember what happened to me was, uh, I'm probably going to cause a little controversy over this, but Kate, uh, Kate Cummings, she did started this eight hour trip, you mm-hmm. know, and a bunch of us down South heard about it and we're like, oh man, we got to, you know, try this uh, company and uh, they're doing these all day trips. So the few of us from Southern California all caravan. I know you guys like have like yeah. this whole little SoCal component going on Kate's boat. I was like, who are all these people yeah. that just like showed up together to go on her trip? We just caravan down here with uh, Shane, my good buddy Christina. Uh, what dude? We're cool in SoCal. Yeah, but we we, can, we know how to hang out in the good whales, weather so and then yeah. see together. the whales. In the yeah, we spot. came and we we just the amount of humpbacks and everything here, you know, it was just oh. amazing. And we were literally just obsessed with the place to the point where. Um, we'd come in down here in the last minute and we hear there was a good, you know, good, I know uh, you and Shane, especially it's yeah. just like all of a sudden the next morning, you're good here. stretch like, of orca sightings. Like, oh yeah. Drives dude. Like it's no, no thing for Jared. Yeah. No yeah. Thing. yeah I love, I actually love the drive. I, I, I take the long route with four or five, one on one, just along the water. Can you remember your relaxing. first trip on the bay here? Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> it, it was like humpback soup, and it still is, you know, and that's what got yeah. me. Dead humpbacks today. Margo and I, I, Margo came with me for my first, like, trip. Because you, you, I met you that, that time. Or maybe it was the second time I met you. You guys came at one time, and we, I wasn't there. We came there. before I moved yeah. here, I think. Yeah. And, you oh guys my came gosh, two or three there was so many moved. humpback, like, it was better than the last two summers. Yeah. I mean, there were so, it was, it was 2014. Crazy. Or no, it was, it was 15. 15. Yeah. And there were so many humpback <laughs> whales, we couldn't even move the boat for like yep. hours. Yeah. And I remember they were like, oh, we're leaving to see some common dolphins. And I was like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you better, I was like, listen up, lady. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. Like, we're watching, I came up here for humpbacks, not common yeah. dolphins. I was looking at some, my older photos, you know, from like my first few trips here. And just like in one one frame, you know, I have like oh, eight man. whales. It's like, oh, yeah. I have one frame, yeah. like 15 whales. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to look at like, that I got at night, you know? Yeah, I'm looking at like, there's, I, ha- I have to have been able to beat that record. The fall know, of 2015. Someone, or someone has to have more than that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fall of 2015, I have photos where there's like 11 open mouths in one frame. Oh, yeah. It's crazy because it's like, once you see that, you like crave to see that again. I know. And, like, you're like, is it you have to be go back until it happens, and it's like, will the whales still be there when I get there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will they still be lunch meeting in two hours? I mean, yeah. Just... So in 2013, when that crazy you were madness here already, happened, no, that fall when the whales stayed late through Thanksgiving, it made national news from Monterey. It was like in New York Times. It was all over the news. And it ran in the newspaper in Oregon. And my mom and I saw it. And we were, I was at home for Thanksgiving break from college. And my mom and I were like, what the heck? Look at this. So then we got on the internet and started looking at all the companies that were all their sightings. Like the YouTube videos from Chris's and photos from all the Facebook pages. And we were like, let's go. How long? We Googled how long it takes to drive there. And we are like sitting there. And we're like, if we leave now, it's 8 p.m. We drive all night. We could be there in the morning, get on the morning whale watch. And my dad was like, stop. Okay, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do the whole leave at night and get there in the morning. Like, you know who does that? Lottie does that. Yeah. She leaves and then she leaves right after the all day trip and drives back home. I'm like, that's. I don't know if I could do that after the all day trip. Southern California is where I do it overnight and then go on the Yeah, Southern California is where actually pretty famous for making that run. (laughs) Yeah, my dad just like pumped the brakes. You two, me and my mom are on the computer trying to figure out how to go. And then we decided to go winter break instead for gray whales, which was also like. I had just done the gray whale census, like the Oregon version of the census for a week. It was cold and foggy. I had a fire at my station all all week because it was so cold. We saw one whale in five days. And then we get to Monterey, 30 whales in an hour. I was like, they had to swim by us. <laughs> if you don't know what a census is, that's what, counting, counting whales? Yeah, so. In, Explain it in, in like certain, scientific yeah, terms. <laughs> in certain places, it depends on what else they do while they're counting the whales. But you're, there's all these locations you pick down the coastline. 
and you're taking just a count by the hour of how many whales you see as they're migrating. And then for the ones in Oregon, the Whale Watching Spoken Here program, you also are an interpreter. So you talk to people about what you're doing while you're doing it. And you have like a display box where you have like a rope that shows how long the whale is and a piece of baleen and pictures and things like that. I'll never forget when I went to the census in Point Vicente for the first time. Oh, yeah. And I walked up, like, and I knew people there, but I ha they only knew me from, like, Facebook. <laughs> so I, like, I was like, hey, there's a whale right there, like, whatever. And there's markings, you know, on the fence. Yeah, the And numbers. I called it out, and they were like, who are you? <laughs> and, I was like, and then Elisa saw me, and she goes, oh, that's Slater. He works on the, you know, the Ocean Explorer or whatever. And and they were like, and I just was like, I was like, yeah. Like I walk up and like, right I'm away, almost famous. I, right, I, right away I find a whale. I felt really good. Yeah, that census what a was boss. Re, that census was really fun to to volunteer at. I, yeah, a lot of good people working there, and yeah, at least it's got some pretty hardcore people out there. I don't know if you see the picture she puts up every now and then, but even through this weather we've been dealing with, they've been out there. Oh I no, know. they're out there. Oh, poor like things. Like rain, sleet, or hail, or whatever. All those you guys are, are troopers. Yeah, and, and I know some of the out. captains. Some of the captains over there. I remember, I kind of appreciate the census. It's like must count every yeah. great whale that passes. Yeah, some of the captains over there. I know appreciated uh, the, the people at the census because they call out stuff every now and then. I remember one day they actually brought. Uh, I think it was the captain from the Voyager actually brought us hot chocolate. I was gonna say it's, and it's sunrise. <laughs> it's sunrise to sunset too. They're out yeah, there. yeah. The, the census people. They like to like. Yeah. The census people actually, yeah, open the gate over there and everything. So, yeah, they're the first ones there. Yeah, in Oregon, we're not that intense, but, yeah, we're there for quite a bit of the day. Yeah, I think the Santa Barbara one's about to start, too, right? The, I think they count northbound only over yeah. there at Cole Point. And then uh, there's another one up in Northern California. Um, yep, Point Arena, was it? Yep, Point yeah, Arena. Point Arena. I bet they didn't count very many gray wells this year. Because the weather's been bad, but hopefully it'll improve while they're counting the northbound migration. Yeah. You guys better count 22,643. Northbound's yeah. usually more How fun. How many is there? They say that 22,000, right? Or something like 25, that. 25,000? Yeah, it's yeah. going up. 25. Yeah. yeah. But I thought it was at like max. That's a guesstimate. Whoa. Carrying capacity. Carrying I mean? capacity. Yeah, yeah. jury's kind of out on that because they're still trying to figure out the nuances of the three different, potentially three different groups of gray whales the Western, the Eastern, and the Pacific feeding. The Pacific oh. Coast so, so, te group. so technically four, maybe, are true westerns. So. And then the last few years, we've had continuous record-breaking numbers of calves, right, in the yeah. lagoons. So, like, that's not necessarily a sign of a population at carrying capacity. So we're still we're still trying to hash that all out. But those census people should have some fun because northbound's usually a little bit close to the shore. So we'll see what happens. What uh, what do you guys think? We'll do each of our opinions, I think, on this one. What do you guys think the best way to get into whale watching or into this type of industry with whales? Um, you, you know what? I always go. put – we get asked this question a lot, especially on the boat, um, even mm -hmm. when I was at the aquarium too. But uh, one thing I've noticed is it seems like the people who get their foot in the door uh, first have the advantage. It's uh, Honestly, now it's, it's no longer that – Big old degree at times. The squeaky um, wheel gets the oil. Yeah, it's it's the people who are I see volunteering at the aquariums, you know, networking with people, uh, getting those internships, you know, working their butt off, meet, uh, going to those uh, workshops and conferences and networking and meeting, you know, these people that they're looking up to and you know, mm -hmm. sending out those emails. Hey, what can you I help you? you know. Yep. Yeah, it, it, yep. it is that way nowadays, and I I see it, you know, a lot out there. I mean, I can. For example, social media is a perfect example. I see people out there putting up all these pictures of whales. They love whales, I can tell, but I don't see them at conferences. I don't see them at ACS meetings. I don't see them at workshops. You know, you got to get out there and, you know, meet people. Uh, show mm -hmm. them your potential. Show them how you are. You know, show them you're really into this. And uh, that's one thing I got to say is get your foot in the door, no matter it be workshops, internships, volunteering, uh, you know. Just go out there, get your foot in the door, meet people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it can be it can be kind of tough because I feel like this is increasingly true in a lot of fields, but it is very true in the marine mammal world. A lot of places want you to work for free, and that's really hard for some people. Um, you know, like I like I said earlier, when how did I get to Monterey? I almost ran out of money before I started getting paid and I was like, oh no, I might have to move back to Oregon. I took such a pay cut coming here. 
Yeah. Which sounds all. like mean or whatever, but I mean. We all did. I took a yeah. huge pay cut because I just wanted to be up here. I didn't yeah. care at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And so that can be that can be limiting for a lot of people to have to volunteer to get your foot in the door. But there are other opportunities, like um, especially on the West Coast, there's American Cetacean Society chapters and other, you know, natural history and education groups like that that host free lectures um, that are also a meeting, you know, regularly, especially in Monterey. Oh, my God. There's something like at least twice or three times a week all month long in our area where you can go and listen to the talks and meet people and just chit chat and even if you're kind of intimidated about that maybe just asking one good question at the end of the talk or making one connection could lead you to a whole new set of opportunities yeah and especially for us to live you know along the coast here east coast or west coast you literally have no excuse guys i mean especially here in the monterey bay man we got how many marine labs around here right uh you know you got the monterey bay aquarium you got moss landing right. marine lab you got hopkins marine station yeah. you know you got Embari, you got uh uc santa cruz with long marine lab and the seymour center there are that many um opportunities out there down south you know caitlin's mentioning acs um you got uh obviously acs in san diego orange county la Orange County and LA offer that um, naturalist the course. course. Yeah, I, was say the natural I took course. that yeah. one in Oregon. I took the naturalist class in Oregon. Yeah, that is something, and I've seen a lot of lot of good people who have made it, you know, into the field, into paying positions, or, or made it in a career who uh, have gone through those programs. And it's it's uh, it's not expensive, you know. It's it's worth the membership fees and. It's worth meeting those people. So if you really want to do it, go for it. So things oh. like that are. And once you start great. like going to a few events like that, or like kind of interacting with those circles, you'll realize how small the field it is. Oh, Everyone yeah. will start to look real familiar real fast. Um, a lot of people do know each other, or at least know of each, of each other. We're a perfect example. All three of us knew <laughs> we of each other before we <laughs> met each other. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And yeah. it's not ever too late to start getting involved in something you're passionate about either is what I tell people. You know, I have, I have people come up that are like my parents' age or older on the boat and they're like, wow, I, I wanted to do marine biology when I was a kid and then it just, you know, it just never worked out. I'm like, it's not too late. Like, if you are really passionate about it, you can volunteer once a week at your local museum or aquarium mm -hmm. and interact with the public about something you're passionate about. I mean, you know, people come to this field in all kinds of interesting ways and and if you are looking to like start it as a as a college student, one of the best little mini lectures I got from a PhD candidate who was I was TAing for at Oregon State was she was like, when I look at who I'm gonna take in the field, I don't really care what their grades are. Yeah, there's some formalities with that for you know being admitted to the lab and everything. But what I like really want to know before I take someone to the South Pacific for three months is how good is your handwriting and how good are you at taking notes on a boat and do you get seasick? <laughs> and the last thing is if the boat breaks down are you helpful <laughs> are you helpful to me because that's the kind of work environment where like you have to be value added in some way shape or form um and and sometimes it's not the book smarts part of it it's like can you cooperate on a boat can you take good field notes and are you a trooper in like really shitty weather for five days yeah <laughs> guys like me and slater are a perfect example you know having been working on a fishing boat first you know you deal with a little bit different you know, type of atmosphere on a whale watching boat. So yeah, yeah I think my route into it is much different than yours, mm -hmm. uh, especially Caitlin's. Yeah, I was working. I was my next door neighbor mm -hmm. brought me on the fishing boat and used to pick me up every morning at five in the morning, and I'd work you know double half day, so six to twelve, and then twelve thirty to five thirty, <laughs> cool. and every single day on the weekends until I was in high school and I started ditching school to go on the boat. You know, <laughs> and then and then as soon as I graduated, I started leaving my college classes to go <laughs> because there was private charters that could be done. <laughs> so, I I think that a good way to get you know with the to be able to see whales and stuff is try to get a job at a whale company whether it be mm -hmm. in the office or you know a deckhand on the boat and a good way to become a deckhand on the boat is actually go on the boat multiple times ask them yeah. if they need help if you could scrub the boat if you could do things like that yeah. um, because if you could provide them value then you know you're more likely to get seen and then on top of that yeah going in the office and trying to get a job up there because on your days off you're definitely going to be allowed to go for free yeah you know? yep exactly so, and, and I know that the it's, it's seen, I, I've seen a lot of emails come into the office and I've gotten messages that say like are you hiring you know for the whale watch company 
And I know it, there's a lot of applications that come in, but if you actually go in the door and ask, you know, you're better better than just sending an email in. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm more inclined to advocate for an applicant if they've if they've applied, but then also have come down and like met the crew so we can kind of see what kind of person they are. Um, because the other thing about, especially working on boats, is it really has to be a mesh of personalities. When you're in a small workspace that can be kind of high stress depending on the weather and you're interacting with a lot of people trying to provide a good customer service experience, we really need to know what your attitude and personality is like before we're gonna just take you on as a cold read. So if you're down here, you're already you know shaking hands and meeting us and seeing if you're a good fit with us, that's gonna speak volumes more for you than just sending an email. Yeah, yeah. I, I know so many people that when I was working on the fishing, or so many kids at that time, they're all older now, they literally came out every weekend when I was already, when I became a deckhand. These kids would come out and all they did was take fish off, you know, and then scrub the boat at the end of the day. And then now they're all 18, 19, and they all work on the boats. And some of them are captains now. So Yeah, I, I, mean, I think another thing is that people got to realize it's a it's a lifestyle. You know, it's a, a career. Boat life. If you're going to make it a career, yeah, Salt exactly. Life. <laughs> life, life out at sea. It's not that crazy. For people, <laughs> yeah, for, for people like us, you know, us three, we, I mean, we, uh, you know, we really are out at sea like pretty much every day as much as we can. Uh, and you're working for companies that sometimes are mom and pop. So I'll be honest with you guys, you know, don't expect that 401k. Don't expect full benefits, you know. If you want to yeah. do this, you really kind of it, – it's tough, but I'll tell you what, I'm I'm pretty happy, <laughs> you know. I get to see my animals every well, day. Well, you have to just love what you do. I mean, that comes down exactly. to like working with your Exactly. Your you got to love what, the, what you do, guys. You know, I love these animals. I love seeing them every day. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones who actually get – paid to go out there and share my love and talk about yeah definitely Definitely lucky to be able to get paid to do what we do you know go Mm -hmm. out there and watch whales yeah for sure and i think if you guys work hard enough and you want to do this yeah you work hard enough you could you can do it but there's you know there's some less glamorous days on the ocean that's for sure but you know it's so worth it it's so worth it (laughs) i (laughs) still One day we had a friendly whale, and the captain and I were standing on the top deck, was just watching this whale like flirt with the boat, and he was like, "This makes up for all the days where we were in the engine room trying to fix something." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> last season, this, yeah, 2018, it seems like we had a lot of that too. Yeah, a lot of memorable moments out there that are worth it, dealing with yeah the yucky weather and stuff. Or having a hard, people having a hard time with the yucky weather is also like. You, you got to get some thick skin to be around a lot of seasick people and be like, it's all right. We're going to, it's going to be okay. We're going to get through it. <laughs> for, for me as a photographer, sometimes, I mean, I lose the creativity or like the, um, not inspiration, but like the motivation. Yeah. Because if you go 10 or 15 days in a row and it's like, you know, you see whales, but it's not like outdoing yourself every time or something. Yeah. I can lose a little bit of motivation, but then it's like you ha- you, you still know that you got to keep going because- you know, it's that one day that your wife forces you to get out of the car and go <laughs> that you see, you know, offshore killer whales eat right, a shark. Right. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, you can get fatigued pretty easily. And even if every day has been like, you know, 10 to 15 lunch feeding humpbacks, which is incredible. It's funny. You'll be like, oh, God, we're just doing the same thing again today. And it's like, are you kidding me? This is like the best ever. Oh, I know. It's like you talk to someone down south and like we had one humpback. I'm like, and like. You almost feel bad saying like, oh, yeah, we had 27 humpbacks today. <laughs> Again. Two did a backflip. And it's like, they're like, they did that yesterday. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we know. But you just got to be out there. The more, ch- more times you're out there, the more likely you're going to, you know, that magical moment's going to happen or that one species you always want to see is just going to show up. If like, you, oh, Go ahead. Sorry. I was like, like, can I remember last year you guys were bugging me about the, the whole letter back thing? Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? We saw them. Guess what? I didn't. Pound it. Yeah. And then one day, we saw two different letter No one backs. can see that but me and Eric just yeah. fist bumped. So if you know how and rare... <laughs> if you know how rare letter backs are, especially in our part of the world, yeah, seeing two in one day is quite a feat. And uh, Caitlin Taylor has not seen the one yet. Yeah, rude. You know what's funny is? I was like on the roof of the Sarandi, and we were headed towards... New, I think you're New right Horizon. Right. New Horizon. Yeah, they changed the so name. So Sir Randy to me. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, Linda. <laughs> we were on, and I was like, 
dude, I think we have one of those leather backs. And then what do you know? We turned and it was a leather back. You know and then all the boats just... came. Everybody was looking at this leather back. You're I spotted it from the roof. My fire. This one time, this leather back swam Stop! right towards us and went under the boat. This one time, it had jellyfish on the side of its mouth you hanging out. You guys are horrible. I'm leaving. I gotta go. I gotta go back in my room. I'll be back. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I have, to, I have to send you guys a video. Oh no. It's not about whales, so I can't. Oh, just being we, out in the water, no matter how it. bad it is, yeah, your chances of seeing something, you know, just increase it just by being out there. Like our like our uh, trusted social media advisor Gary V says, you just gotta have gratitude every day. <laughs> You're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, also he says something else. Day. What? It you can be happy not making a lot of money if you're doing what you love. Yep. So yeah. you can make $20,000 or you can make a million dollars. And if you just enjoy what you're doing, then it doesn't matter how much you make. I mean, we get to do something. I mean, it can be stressful if you can't pay your bills. but <laughs> We get to do something that people literally save for a bucket list trip exactly. to do once. And we get to do it for a living. It's pretty amazing. Speaking of that, have you ever had like a bucket list person like on your boat? Yeah, yeah for sure. All the time. Yeah. So many people. Sometimes if you ask, I like, don't even know what to do with that information when they tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> you know who used to do it a lot was Chris. He used to always walk out and be like, who's first time seeing a whale? And, and you know, and everybody would raise yeah, their hand. Yeah. There's a lot of. You know what I want to talk about actually? And I was thinking about this a couple of days ago. You know how many people have wrote me and said, I went whale watching on a school trip when I was a kid. We didn't see anything. You know, and they like don't want to yeah. go again because they think that. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because you know you hear a lot of people that worked here. Well, ten years ago they didn't see anything either. They didn't see a lot of whales here. But now mm -hmm. everything's starting to come back. And yeah, things are know. changing. So definitely, if you haven't gone because you had a past experience where you didn't see whales, now's the time because a lot of places yeah. that weren't seeing whales are seeing whales now. So. Well, and I feel like companies' abilities to get information out yeah. using the internet and social media and review pages and things like that is just increasing people's awareness of like where to go and when because like what if you totally went in the off season and a company was just like running boat tours and you thought you were going to see whales because they had a whale on the sign but like that wasn't actually the end game of the trip you know so companies are getting better about setting expectations and like getting the information to people about when to go and and i think it's getting better for you to figure out like where you should go which is monterey <laughs> <laughs> Which is everywhere. I was going to tell you. Wherever that. you can go. Wherever go. you can go. Definitely, it's a lot easier to do your research. Yeah. And invi glad. invite us because we want to go whale watching. I'm glad yeah, there's yeah. many whales here. Well, I was, I was getting back to that bucket list thing. I just I forgot whose boat I was on. It was one of the two boats I work on. But uh, we actually had a, an older guy. Um, we were unaware, but I guess one of our crew members was talking to his family. And I guess the guy actually had terminal cancer. And his bucket list thing was to see a whale. And he got... They got Ooh, to do that for them. Yeah. One of the companies I used to work yeah. for did make a wish. That one was always like, because it's usually it's such like, a good feeling when you know someone just like accomplished a huge goal. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah. Just like the same we get when we see a new species or we see something that we haven't seen in a long time, or you know, it's just like that feeling is amazing. Yeah. Especially when you get to share it with other people on the boat. That's like, I think one of the best feelings about working on a whale watch boat yeah. is watching like cuz we've seen the humpback lunch feed, but when you see when you have so like 60 people on the boat that have never seen it like light up because yeah. they're first time seeing it. And sometimes you know. they don't get why you're so excited like the beaked whales, you know. Oh my gosh. I to tell people like, "Okay guys, I've been out in the water 30 years and you know, this is like the first time I'm seeing these." And then they finally hit them like, "Oh, you know, <laughs> you're like, why is this guy running up and down the rails? <laughs> why is this grown man crying? <laughs> why is this grown man crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we had the Barrett's, Barrett's beak whales, yeah, I, I, I was getting pretty emotional. <laughs> I had to tell these people, like, you don't get that. You know why I'm so excited? The crew actually yeah. sent me a heads up when they saw them because they knew he was going to come back in and be, like, some, feeling some type of way. So they wanted me to be prepared. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Why is that grown man crying? <laughs> I always say I'm going to cry, but I never cry. I'm always like, if I see this, I'm going to cry. But then it happens and I don't cry, but I want to. I want to cry. <sighs> I think if I see right whales this May, I'm gonna. I can't. Cry. I don't have time to cry because if I cry, then I can't see through the viewfinder. <laughs> then I miss a shot. So there's no time for crying. I can't be missing shots. There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying. There in is no crying in baseball. <laughs> there's no crying in whale watching, Eric. Gosh, put it together. They don't. You just gotta make them understand. You know what? You can cry when the killer whales eat gray whales. Yeah. It makes me sad. Even gray whales, you know, like I find it so fascinating. 
Really? Yeah. It made me sad when we my, watched that sea lion skip person? out of the water fifty times. Oh, that my was a bad, bad day. Person, yeah. I okay, it was. So I wasn't even. I didn't get sad, but I was just like, she was, I felt bad. It was bad. dramatic. Yeah, what we saw. Yeah, it was. It was, cra- like, it was screaming. It was like skipping out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst part was when his buddy put his flipper around the dead oh, one. Yeah. Remember? We were like, we and Sarah were just like. There was another sea oh, lion. And moment of silence. Yeah. The other sea lion was like right underneath it, right? And as With soon as the killer flipper, whales like, would like, go. Like, yo, buddy, yeah, come like, on. Yeah, like, come on, let's go. He like was tapping him. Like, come and on, as soon as go. the killer no, whales would come up really? to hit it again, he would dip out of the way and they kept hitting the same one. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was bad. That was a gnarly predation. Why didn't we video that? that like, such, like, it's like a moment we can't explain. Because you know, I'll tell you why it. we didn't video Because the killer whale breached right in front of us and got Eric wet. <laughs> got all of us wet on the back of the boat. I'll never forget that, too. Oh, yeah. Eric was... Very emotional after that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Eric's like, I just got splashed on by a killer whale. <laughs> yeah. Eric, Eric's just, just an emotional guy about, uh, hey, but you about know what? whales. Eric and I have I multiple it. selfies with animals. That's true. You and I have a selfie together that Monty took. Or oh, we have yeah, a the breaching together humpback. With the breaching hey, Caitlin, we have a self- I have a selfie with a letter Shut back. up. <laughs> oh, nice. Really? I need to get really? a little sound. I need to get like a, a little sound thing where it could like. You're like fist bump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but even gray whales, like I always have to tell people, especially if you're not from around here, is like this animal can only be seen in the North Pacific now. You know, if you're from the Atlantic, if sorry. you're from any other ocean, you can't really see these right now. So, yeah, you gotta learn how to tell people how special that moment is. If you know, I think northern right whale dolphins are still really special to me. Yeah, yeah a lot of people favorite. don't know they exist. Yeah, that I didn't know so they excited when, when we I see found. Them. I even I think I already already lived here. For like a year, and then I found out that they had them here, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, I was like, "What do you mean?" And they're like, "Yeah, they don't even have a dorsal fin." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> like, oh my god, I, I can't believe I didn't know. I'm pretty sure I didn't know that for like at least a year. Yeah, I lived here. No dorsal fin. That That's how much they don't show. You know, they don't. Sh- they cannot show up, or I can miss them. Yeah, well, you never know. The world may never know. That's why you guys want to be out in the water as much as possible. You just never know what might happen out there. Do you guys know anything about the southern right whale dolphins? Not like, really. Do you know where they're at? Uh, I think you can see them in Australia. S- south. Southern. So- <laughs> oh, there <it> <laughs> well, like, I don't know. South Pole? I really don't know. Um, no, because if you guys find out, I would it. like to go there because... Well, More their cousins, plans. the northern right whale dolphins, don't allow me to take photos of them, but maybe these ones. More will. travel plans hey, you from know, Slater. You know our good friend... Uh, Pete, Pete Garbett, maybe he knows. Our Facebook friend. Yeah. Where are you at, Pete? Have you been listening to this podcast? I need to know. Um, let's see. IUCN. What do they say? Those Lizzo's are what wow. you can wow. see them way south. But you can see them like everywhere: South America, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Dang what? what we gotta they... go. You guys, I'm. <laughs> The thing is, is he's upset. Slater's did, mad. You know what we should? Inv- I can't say it on the podcast. Well, if we you guys should invent <laughs> a credit card that's just for going to see whales. Stop. <laughs> oh yeah, we can make this credit card, and we'll have this penthouse that only the credit card members can go and to. And the credit card will have a dolphin on it, and it'll be really heavy and metallic. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag fire festival. <laughs> oh no. Anyways. In case you guys don't know what we're talking about, yeah, we're talking about right whale dolphins. A really neat streamlined dolphin that has a no dorsal fin. The so. Lizadelphus. Yeah, they're pretty amazing species. Looking. There's a northern and a southern, and um, we can see the northern here. The southern apparently is is pretty common. I mean, its range is wide. I shouldn't say it's common. Its range is wide. And that's another kind of caveat about the, the northern right whale dolphin is there's lots of them, but you don't see them near shore very often. They're typically a pretty open ocean pelagic species, and they just kind of come into the bay, and then they make their way back out of the bay too. Do you feel like the Pacific white-sided dolphins are very pelagic as well? Uh, I wouldn't. I would I think they're yeah, like, but then like coastal. down in yeah down in Southern California, you guys have them kind of coastal only regularly. The no, we only see them along the coast, really. Yeah, but in Monterey, I've never seen like, like a pod like five miles out of you. I've only seen them along. Yeah, the beach. like in Monterey, we just see them. They like buzz through every once in a while, and a couple hundred, or you know, small as thirty to fifty, and then then they're gone again. God, they're so cool. They are. So yeah, cool. the seafloor makes a huge. I think they know they're cool. Difference too. for our sightings. Oh yeah, like Rizzo's. Rizzo's back in Southern California are way out, usually further offshore because it's 
got, um, you know, deeper water, more squid out there. Here, you know, where our water drops off a lot faster in the bay, I mean, I've seen risos from, from shore. I've seen them from the harbor. Sometimes I go live oh, on yeah. Instagram We've when seen I them see in the them office. from That's the right. office. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm and like, come whale watching. There's those came, dolphins right now. Someone came from Southern California and they, they went on the boat and I think they went with you, Eric, and they saw Rizzo's just in front of, you know, like right in front of uh, yeah. the aquarium. And they were like, they wrote me on Instagram. I was actually in Hawaii and they said, dude, you guys have Rizzo's like right here. And yeah. I was like, yeah, we're pretty lucky. Yeah. So that, that drop makes a huge difference. All right. Well, I think you guys learned a little bit about us. And mm-hmm. about how we got into whales and how we got jobs on whale watching boats. Yep, yeah. And, and um, how you possibly could get a job on a whale watching boat or in the field. Yeah. And we're, we're like we said in another episode, I think maybe episode six, we talked about this. We um, started on our Podbean site, we started a page for resources. So um, when we come across things that um, are helpful or have good information, um, we're, we're making a list on there. So um, one of the ways I heard about the internship that kind of started it all in Monterey for me was on that Marmam listserv from University of Victoria. Um, and so we have that on there. We have a couple other things, and we'll keep adding to the list as we go. So you can always reference that and, and check that out um, if you're looking for ideas. And then you're, you're welcome to reach out to us online, too. I did have someone message me the other day, and it was asking me some questions about how to get involved, and I gave kind of similar top, uh, like topics and tips that we were talking about here. So definitely definitely reach out to us. We're happy to and share some information with you. And if you have book you. recommendations or movie recommendations as well. Or resource pages, anything. Yeah. yeah. For Someone, sure. um, Will, Will Gilmore gave us a recommendation of a book called Neptune's Ark. What is this science word? Do you guys know? I can't read that from here. That's way too small. I need oh, glasses. Ichthyosaurus. Ichthyosaurus. Yeah, yeah Ichthyosaurus. <laughs> Ichthyosaurus. Ichthyosaurus. <laughs> Get your synonyms. <laughs> All right. Synonym. So synonym. thank you for that recommendation. And uh, yeah. Yeah, guys, so, yeah, feel free to, like I said, reach out to people. Feel free to reach out to us. You can find us all on uh, Instagram. And what else? I was thinking after going live on Instagram tonight, that was kind of fun. Maybe we could do some sort of live stream, like on Twitch, and people can come in and ask live questions, and we can hang out and chat and eat snacks. And I'm game. There's snacks. I'm in. Yeah, as long as there's snacks. Hopefully not crunchy ones. So or what all if it's just mic. hanging out with me? I mean, we like hanging out with you. Yeah, I like Slater time. Slater time. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you guys think that, that you guys would be interested in us, it could be even like a Facebook Live or Twitch, um, whatever. But if you guys are interested in that, let us know um, somehow. Reach, Reach out, out Instagram. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to hear what you what you guys want because we want to be able to, to get all this information out to you in ways that's going to be easy for you. That's, that's kind of yeah. the point. Help us help you and keep those uh, topics coming in also. Yeah, I think my favorite thing to answer or to talk about is really when they ask us topics. Mm-hmm. I mean, because we can try to come up with some, but I like when they ask questions. Me too. Yeah. More questions, the better. All right, you guys. Well, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, um, hope you guys enjoyed episode number eight. Woohoo! And I uh, hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, thank you.